Hello, welcome to Vid Under the Influence video blog episode 6 and yes it's raining again, seems to be a pattern going on here, you probably guess it's winter. Anyway, I, I'm in Forest Gate which I haven't been to in about 20 years, oh, god the old times eh? Uh, but anyway, I'm here because of course it's another gig, I'm outside the Forest Tavern which is right next to the Forest Gate station. It used to be known as the Railway Tavern, but it was bought by the Anti Group uh, three years ago, and it's gone through a bit of a revival now. Um, there's a mixture of quiz, DJ, and um, open mic nights. They sometimes have vinyl fairs here, which is great. I need to get down to one of these one day. And they also have funk and jazz sessions. Um, there's been a lot of uh, acts that have played here, and quite a few of them are under influence favourites, including Rotifer, uh, Paper Like Cambridge, and a uh, David Cronenberg's wife. Uh, tonight uh, is being headlined by Pete Astor, the brilliant Pete Astor, who uh, used to be a leader of the Loft and the Weather Profits. Uh, he released a brilliant LP, Split Milk, last year, 2016. So he's going to be playing, hopefully, a lot of tracks from that tonight. And uh, it's going to be supported by, of course, uh, uh, Under the Influence favourites and, of course, co-host of the Under the Influence and the runner and leader and dictator and everything else, Nathan. And uh, looking forward to seeing them and uh, hopefully getting an interview with them and Pete Astor this evening. So I'm going to go to the gig now because it's raining and I'm getting wet. Take care. Okay, so we're here with Pete Astor. He's just come off stage um, here at the Forest Tavern here in Forest Gate. Um, we've, we've grabbed him very quickly for a quick Under the Influence interview. Um, which is brilliant. Um, thank you, Pete. I've just got a couple of very uh, broad questions. Obviously, I'm loving the new album, Spilt Milk. We've played a lot of songs off that set tonight. Um, you've released music under a number of different guises over the years. You know, a lot of the weather prophets, obviously, the wisdom of Harry, amongst others. I, I suppose the first question is do you see those projects as, as separate entities or part of the same creative yeah. whole world? Oh, I'm definitely the same, yeah. But I mean, it's different. I suppose when it's solo, you're kind of. Number one, you don't have to think of the band name, which is a relief. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess you're the boss, you know, whereas with having I mean, a collaboration is brilliant. We still, I still collaborate. I mean, my solo albums yeah. are not that solo, but I guess I write songs. So kind of was it a conscious decision to, to go under your own name now? Having yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I was gonna add up. Uh, yeah, I was gonna. I'm just. It's like a. It's like, yeah, I might as well just be me. It's also, I've done different things and different songs which go through different projects, and I thought I'll just do that. I did also do solo stuff in the early 90s, and it's in a way a continuation of that. Although I've changed my name from Peter to Pete. <laughs> That's a significant, significant change very there. Significant, yeah. Very, very significant. Like, uh, the only person who calls me Peter is my mother. <laughs> <laughs> when we Brilliant. did our first loft records, we were all called it was Andy, it was called Andrew Strickland. I don't, I don't know what came over everyone, and, you know, and he was Andrew Strickland, I was Peter Astor, and, we, and it just yeah. stuck. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. that I know calls me Peter, and they never did, but that became like the stage name, you know, so the yeah, yeah, yeah. version. Um, yeah, so I've changed, I've, I've gone back to my real self, which is Pete. Good. I mean, the new album, which I'm enjoying a lot, has a quite, quite a classic song feel to it. I mean, I love to song, you know, love Mr. Music, and yeah, yeah. My Right Hand, and a bit. Do you feel, I suppose as a songwriter, I'm asking, do you feel that your approach to, to songwriting has changed and developed over the years, or do you have a similar approach to it? It's kind of, it's, it's changed, but it's also kind of, I realised about two or three or four years ago, obviously, I think about it all the time, like, I was really in it. Uh, Piece by Philip Larkin, the poet. Oh, I, I love his poetry, I love his writing, he doesn't write very much, which I really like. And he wrote something about, and he was going, someone seems to say he has to write the poems, not even that he should write, but the poems that he can write. Yeah. And I kind of thought that was songwriting. I was in the time of making a record, I was making the beginning, starting the songs of Spill Milk. Okay, no, was for some no. and, and I was doing the songs, and I was kind of doing like a kind of a metronomy type thing. I love metronomy, and that would be way cooler if I did something like metronomy. I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to do what I do. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. So it's almost like, yeah, I love metronomy, and it would be way better if I was like metronomy or grimes or something. You know, and I love, I love, I love the way that a lot of music, like porches, are a band I love, and like, they move from like guitar stuff to electronic stuff. But ultimately, like, it's almost like going back to doing something which is kind of quite. Simple, straightforward, that's what I do, do you know what I mean? And for better or worse, it's straightforward songs. So it's in a way, 
It's changed, we've just gone back to doing something which I've kind of always done. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, you know, and it's just, it, it is what it is, you know, it's like, yeah, it's not really invented the wheel, but I like I like working within those strictures and trying to write a song that's you know, not, not, you know, it's not modern jazz, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but so it has that kind of yeah. feel to it. So when we spoke before, and you played one under the influence of Night of Heat, when it was uh, hosted by Peter Cambridge, yeah, uh, Ian, it was, uh, yeah, fantastic. That's Steve Harley night, yeah, and it was great. We spoke after that. We spoke yeah. about the idea of you maybe hosting yeah. a movie time one day, and the idea at the time I think you put forward to Sid Barrett, yeah, you'd be yeah. And yeah. But the question really is, is obviously we'd love you to do that at some point. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, other yeah. other artists you'd like to do, or who else do you feel has really influenced and shaped your music? I mean, Sid Barrett's the one. I mean, he's the person that completely. When I first heard his stuff, I tell you what, really, who I really loved as well was the Stooges, but I, just, I can't read the Stooges stuff, it was never really why I remember thinking, always feeling like a complete failure because I could never be Iggy. <laughs> uh, then, so then I had to move to do something slightly different. Yeah, yeah, no one can be Iggy. Yeah, no, yeah, right, but also, I mean, you know, Lux Interior Managers are pretty yeah, good. Sure, I was sure. like, this is some kind of, you know, the guy in the Fat White Family. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And um, none of these things were I was capable of. So. So yeah, so Sid Barrett was like this thing, he was like an English songwriter, it was like the first time for me where I was like, fuck, you know, he's actually singing in an English accent, which when I was like really young, getting into music was like so important to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's just like, so that was that English accent thing, that, that Englishness, which was like, for me, was really important in terms of identity, because it's like, I don't have a problem with whatever accent people see in for me at that time and now, it's really important to try and meet me in an English person. So that fits. So Sir Barrett was like, the real, yeah, the real, like, wow, wow, that's fantastic, it's an English accent, especially in solo albums. Yeah. Amazing. Well, listen, thank you very much, Pete. Yeah, Absolutely. really appreciate it. Thank you.